The movie opens as a man named Ian drives all the way to a remote forest. Upon reaching the entrance, he checks his phone, which has several missed calls. Ian contemplates for a while, but eventually gathers his stuff and heads inside the jungle on foot. Turns out he's here on a solo hike, possibly to clear his mind. He slowly makes his way through the dense forest and occasionally stops to stare at things. We get to know that Ian's not a regular hiker, as he gets dead tired inside the first 10 minutes. Moreover, he's dressed in a sweater and jeans, which is a weird choice for such an occasion. Ian also didn't bring any protective socks, and now his feet are full of painful rashes. Despite this, he perseveres and continues on his journey. Upon reaching a bit further, Ian spots a hiker couple in the distance. They appear to be taking pictures and having a great time. This, surprisingly, makes him very anxious, and he decides to wait until they're gone. Turns out, Ian's a hardcore introvert who doesn't like the company of other people. When he gets tired of waiting, he takes a detour off the regular path and runs away before they can see him. If they see me, I'll scream. After a while, Ian decides to take a short snack break, but just as he sits down, he is startled by a fellow hiker named Nikki. This guy seems to be very chatty, and he bombards Ian with a lot of questions. The latter is too nervous to answer any of them, but Nikki is relentless. He keeps on blabbering about irrelevant stuff and makes cringy jokes. In the end, he proposes that they hike together until they reach the waterfall. Ian desperately tries to be left alone, but Nikki somehow convinces him against it. He also makes Ian go ahead so that he doesn't run away. Along the journey, Nikki continues talking, although he doesn't receive many answers. The only information he knows about Ian is his name and the fact that he used to own a business. After several hours of walking, a tired Ian says he wants to take a leak, but instead of letting him do it in a quiet place, Nikki simply turns to the other side. The two then continue their journey until they finally reach a cabin in the middle of the woods. They find the earlier couple, Monica and Austin there, who are also heading to the waterfall. That night, Ian tries to cook some meat in the kitchen. When Nikki shows up, he becomes so anxious that he pulls out the meat from the stove, even though it's raw. He then tries to leave, but Nikki urges him to cook it properly. Ian complies and puts the meat back, but he is so distracted that he ends up burning the stove. Thankfully, Nikki and Monica jump to the rescue and put the fire out. In the aftermath of this incident, unembarrassed Ian grabs his stuff and quietly sneaks out of the cabin, but upon venturing a bit further, he spots something in the distance. This scares him shitless, so he immediately turns around and returns to the cabin. He then has a small chat with Austin, who appears to be more understanding and calm. In the morning, while Ian's having breakfast, Nikki approaches him for a quick chat. Despite what went down last night, he doesn't seem to be angry at all. Nikki reveals that he was the one who cleaned all the burnt dishes without any complaints. He then informs Ian that all four of them will be setting out on their hike together. Our anxious guy tries again to be left alone, but Nikki wins his trust by handing him a new pair of hiking socks. The group then departs from the cabin together, telling different stories and jokes. The only one who doesn't take part in the conversation is Ian, of course. When they sit for lunch later, Austin reveals that they saw a dead animal the previous day. It had been mutilated barbarically, so he's curious about what predator could do so. Nikki doesn't pay attention to it, but Ian is left deep in thought. The conversation then shifts to relationships, and Ian is asked whether he has a wife. He tries to evade the question, but the others coerce him for an answer. Eventually, Ian reveals that he had a wife, but they're now separated. Fed up with the interrogation, he then heads inside the woods to take a leak. But as he's about to do so, he spots scratch marks and blood on the trees. This once again scares the life out of him, so he promptly runs back to his group, likely pissing himself along the way. The four then continue on their journey and walk for several hours without interruption. At one point, a paranoid Ian feels like someone's following them. When he turns back, he spots something in the distance that freaks him out. He quickly summons the others and asks if they notice it as well. However, even after having a good look, they can't see anything. By this point in time, the group has become aware that Ian is socially awkward and problematic, but they don't want him to feel bad, so they simply claim that it was some random animal. Nikki even goes as far as saying that it's a goat, which has wandered off the city. Hours later, the group arrives at another camp. This time, they find two other backpacks inside, but no people around. Ian, as usual, becomes concerned about their whereabouts. But the others don't think much of it and start jamming with a guitar. Nikki is just the kind of guy to bust out Wonderwall. Later that night, Ian has trouble sleeping due to his anxiety. As he wanders around, Nikki approaches him for a conversation. He asks if Ian is alright, as he's been
been acting very weird throughout the journey, he urges him to open up, and the latter finally reveals that he has been feeling very low due to some personal issues. Nikki feels bad for him, so he hands him a sleeping pill, which Ian consumes right away. After Nikki departs, the weird guy starts roaming around the room. Curiosity gets the better of him, and he proceeds to inspect one of the abandoned backpacks. He finds a camera inside it, which he turns on without any hesitation. He then discovers two girls, who are hiking through the forest and having a good time. But in one of the pictures, Ian notices a man creeping at them from a distance. When he zooms in, he's shocked to learn that the man is none other than Nikki. Ian tries to find out more, but he starts getting dizzy all of a sudden. This is when he suspects that Nikki handed him a drug instead of a sleeping pill. He tries to call for help, but soon loses consciousness and drops to the floor. When Ian wakes up in the morning, he finds himself sleeping peacefully. Turns out, Nikki covered him with a blanket so he wouldn't fall sick. But Ian is still suspicious of the talkative guy and proceeds to expose him. He brings out the camera and asserts that Nikki was stalking the two girls. Austin and Monica ask to see the picture, but the camera's battery seems to have run out. Despite this, Ian accuses Nikki of luring the girls to a silent place and murdering them. He also claims that he was drugged last night, as he was getting close to finding out the truth. Upon hearing all of this, Nikki doesn't even try to defend himself. He's stunned that such accusations are being made against him. Even the other two are confused by what Ian's trying to say. Just then, the two hiker girls show up at the cabin, leaving Ian completely embarrassed and remorseful. The stalking was probably just foreplay with both girls. I told you this guy fucks. I mean, plays Wonderwall. I mean, uh, same thing. In the next scene, he approaches Nikki and apologizes for his behavior. He claims that he's become paranoid because of the lack of sleep and proper rest. Surprisingly, Nikki still forgives him and acts as if nothing happened. Austin and Monica are also cool with the situation as they feel really bad for Ian. They try to support him in every way they can. Later, they pack their belongings and continue on their journey. They soon arrive at a crossroads, one way leading to the waterfall and the other to Cowry Forest. Monica and Austin then announce that they want to head towards the forest as they've heard it's much more beautiful. So, the two groups part ways and go in separate directions. The boys walk for several more hours and it starts getting dark. At one point, Ian again spots something in the distance that makes him scared, but his fear soon disappears when they are greeted by the beautiful waterfall. The two take a moment to rejoice at the majestic sight before continuing on their journey. After a while, it gets completely dark and they have to make their way through a narrow road. Ian proposes that they take another route, but Nikki insists that they don't have another choice. He then hands the scared guy his expensive flashlight and asks him to lead the way. Ian reluctantly moves forward and navigates through the dark place, but he soon loses his footing and slips, causing the flashlight to fall down the slope. This annoys Nikki, and he orders Ian to get down there and retrieve it. He also makes it known that he spent $300 on it. Accuse me of murder if you want, but get that flashlight, bitch. Ian hesitantly complies and slides down the slope to get the flashlight, but at that moment, he notices a dark figure standing right next to him. Panicked, he turns away from there while screaming at the top of his lungs. Monica and Austin, who happen to be nearby, hear his cries and rush to him. Nikki also arrives there, and they look down to find what was chasing Ian. However, they once again don't see anything. Upon reaching the nearest cabin, Nikki, Austin, and Monica have a serious discussion. They are concerned for Ian and want to get him out of this jungle ASAP. Since the couple are on their honeymoon, Nikki graciously offers to escort him out. He is still willing to help the anxious, weird stranger, despite everything that has happened. The trio then approaches Ian and informs him of their decision. Surprisingly, he doesn't have any problem with it. The very next morning, Ian and Nikki set out on their journey towards the city. They walk for hours and hours until Nikki has to poop, so he goes to a corner. Ian then takes this moment of solitude to reflect on everything that's been going on, but while he's lost in his thoughts, he realizes that Nikki has still not returned. He calls out for him, but receives no response. Ian slowly heads in the direction where his friend has gone a while ago, but he soon comes across a horrific sight, which shocks him to the core. In the next scene, Ian runs to the couple and informs them that it killed Nikki. He is so terrified and panicked that he fails to explain the entire situation. Because of this, the couple believes that Ian's the one who killed Nikki. So, they ask him to stay away from them. Austin even brings out his knife and threatens him to go away. After a while, when the couple reaches a bit further, they decide to click some pictures. But, all of a sudden, Monica is pulled inside by an unseen force. This sends Austin into a state of panic, and he rushes to find her. However, all he comes cross are her mutilated remains lying in the middle of the forest. Ian also happens to be there, prompting Austin to suspect that he's the killer. He tries to attack him, but his leg gets stuck in a bear trap. This is when a large, 
bird-like dinosaur appears in the distance and drags Monica's corpse away. The boys are left in complete shock by what they just witnessed, realizing that it's not safe here. Ian quickly frees Austin from the trap and escorts him to the cabin. They then lock all the doors and prepare for the monster to arrive. True to their assumption, the dinosaur bird shows up and breaks through the door. It immediately stabs Austin in the face with its sword-like beak and kills him. The bird then goes after Ian, but our weird hero appears to be a good fighter. He grabs its neck and tussles it to the ground. He then chokes the bird with all his might until it finally stops breathing. When the sun rises the next morning, a bruised and battered Ian makes his way through the forest. As he's about to reach the parking lot where his car is, he notices one of the hiker girl's dead bodies hung on a tree. Then, upon venturing a bit further, he comes across a bunch of dinosaur eggs, indicating that there are more creatures. A scared Ian then tries to get away, but he's abruptly attacked by a large male. It claws his legs and stabs his thigh. Fortunately, he manages to escape by taking off his jeans. Ian then keeps running until he reaches the road. The movie ends as he stops a car and desperately says, help me. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.